Ready? Yes. Are you laughing already? <laughs> Hi folks and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking mostly about seeds that we're sowing in July, flower seeds for the back garden and for the allotment. Um, it's not really a guide. If you want a guide, I'll link in the description to my good friend Nile. He's got a brilliant series on flowers to sow for, for specific months. Ours is not going to be very comprehensive. No. It's more just things that we've got lying around in the many, many seeds <laughs> that Jess owns. We were having a little uh, spirited discussion yesterday about who has the most seeds. And this is uh, just some of Jess's flower seed collection. <laughs> she was saying that I had more chili seeds. And I think she's categorically incorrect. We kept finding more and more seeds as we went. And this is the special seed box with just the... The sweet peas, they're all different. And I got them all like half price, so it's fine. This is actually the second time we're recording. We recorded yesterday of us planting all the seeds, but it was so windy. Seeds kept blowing everywhere. The audio was completely unusable. So we're doing a bit of an update today. There was something else I was going to say. Um... Any idea? About the seeds? I remember the other thing is after the seeds we're going to do just a super quick little garden update and talk a little bit about some of the plans as well which Very have continued. Very exciting garden plans. <laughs> so we've got my seeds on the left and JB's down the bottom. So my ones I've planted mainly biennials. I saw a trick probably on Niall's channel or maybe just online uh, that if you plant them now for the latter half of this year, they think they've already been planted. So they'll flower next year instead of having to wait two years. So I'm hoping that that works with some of these next year. So I've started a few hollyhocks, not too many. I'm going to do them in pots next year um, so they don't get quite as large and take over. I'm trying delphiniums for maybe the sixth time. They've never ever been successful, but I'm trialing them now. And then I have some other ones, so some lupins and some foxgloves. Um, I'm trying to be a bit more conscious about where I plant things next year, so I have all the tall things at the back. Um, and obviously we are rearranging the garden a little bit, so they'll mainly be for the raised beds, but hopefully they'll be ready to plant out when we have the raised beds this year. And then some smaller things, uh, well, not small, Canterbury Bells are really like blousy, um, but they're not as tall. And then I have some wallflowers, lots of wallflowers. I think maybe like four rows of wallflowers. Some larkspur, which are also tall, and some cornflowers. Uh, and then these ones are also just really small ones. So poppies, pansies, candy tufts, sweet williams. Um, and then I've got some poached eggs, which are really, really cute. Um, some more oxide daisies, some rock rose, and some candy tufts. I have already attempted to sow all of these before. Um, and they did, well, nothing happened. Uh, so we'll see if they come out next year. So for mine, the idea is that these are mostly biennials for the allotment raised beds. Now, folks, I knew there was something that I was forgetting, and it's that I forgot to mention that we went to the garden centre to look for plug plants for the allotment and for the garden, and there was nothing. There was absolutely nothing of use, which is why we just went, sod it, let's do our own seeds. The ones that Jess started and has kind of given over to me, and I'm, this is all completely new to me, this side of things, so... I'm, I'm hopeful, but one of the nice things about these biennials is it does it, it's not the end of the world if these don't come through. But we've got some stocks, some wallflower. I've gone quite, you know, quite a lot on, on here, just three plants in this tray, and then some sweet william. And then this other one is a little bit different. You know, those first three are quite traditional. The idea is as well, all of these are gonna be for cut flowers, hopefully. And then we've got a, a few candy tufts, some delphinium, Larkspur and Lupin, these are all quite the, the kind of pointy ones, you know, which are a little bit, they're a little bit scary for me, but they're maybe not my favorite. But I think if they're in a bouquet or something like that, they're probably quite nice. I do as well have in our conservatory, a few more plants I'm gonna be direct sowing in the raised beds. Um, I've got loads of cornflowers, loads of different types and colors. There's some dark ones, some blue ones. This orange flush calendula, which I think just looks amazing. Never seen one. Quite like that so they can be direct sown now apparently as a direct as a bit of a biennial slightly unusual oxide daisies they can be sown now just going to scatter them around basically some very funky looking poppies and some california poppies as well and apparently this candy tuft can also be direct sown around now so not loads but we've just kind of gone through the seeds that we've got and we're going to try the best that we can with them so We've had some challenging conditions today. Not only has the weather been either completely boiling or windy as you like, we've also had helicopters going over, about a hundred sirens going past. <laughs> I don't know what is going on, 
But we've got a little bit of calm now, so we can do garden tour? Garden tour. Garden tour. So the begonia is massive and looking, well, looking much better. I know I've said before that I didn't like the leaves, which I still don't, but the flowers are making up for it. I've got another one that we might show you in a minute. That's like a light pink, a lot smaller than this one. Um, and then I have the Philadelphius, um, which I just bought from the garden center. Jess is slowly trying to kill this. I'm <laughs> on the label and everything online says it is hardy as you like and like impossible to kill. And yet every day I come out here and it looks like it's trying. It's in the smallest pot. I am going to repot that um, today. It's just really, really hot. Um, I'm going to repot that. And then the geranium next to it might be my new favorite thing. JB doesn't like them or is not super, super um, fond of them, but I think they're so pretty. I think the color is gorgeous. I don't hate them. So when I come back with two to three more, well, we'll see. Um, and then I did buy this rose. This is a David Austin that I saw at Hampton Flower Show when we went to see Hannah. It's a shrub and it's gorgeous. They're not out yet properly, so I'll get JB to give you an update, maybe on Instagram or something, um, when it comes out. This red rose is looking a bit sad, isn't it, Jess? It is looking a bit sad. And I did wonder if anyone in the comments um, knew anything about it. It's a rambling rose. Um, I have Googled um, how to deadhead it. Um, and I'm not sure if I need to deadhead it. It looks like I do, um, but there's just nothing consistent online. So I'm not sure where to deadhead. I think um, it might just be kind of in shock from the replanting yeah. going in here. It just looks a bit sad. There is some new growth. Oh, oh look at that tortoise shell mm -hmm. uh, down here. If yeah. anyone has any um, ideas or any thoughts about it, please do let me know. And then I did get another rose a little while ago, this pink one in the little green pot. Mm. Um, and it was reduced, it was ridiculously cheap because it was dead. So I deadheaded the lot and now some of the blooms are coming back. Nice. Um, and it's super, super cute. I'm in my rose era, clearly. <laughs> um, sunflowers are looking nice. The sunflowers are looking nice. The sunflowers are looking like they need to be staked up again. Well, yeah, they've not really been staked up at all, have they? Um, excuse you. There are stakes on every single one of these sunflowers. They're just significantly smaller than the sunflower is now. Um, can you see that? Yeah, we're just going to trust. We're going to trust it. Okay. Uh, and then our tomato. Yeah, there's not actually many tomatoes on here, but that's because we've harvested them all. There's like one little red one on there. Spin. Yes. But, um, <laughs> yeah, this is cropped quite well. Just a little tumbling tumbling tomato for the raised, raised basket. Raised ba what's it called? <laughs> Hanging basket. Hanging basket. There's a bee there. Hanging basket. On the sunflower. The bees are liking the garden this year, which we're very excited about. Maybe something to do with the Nomo. I don't think it's anything to do with the Nomo. <laughs> Thank you. Let's look at the sweet peas. So I have documented that the sweet peas did not go super well this year because they were um, kept out of the sunlight by the hollyhocks, but they are coming back. Well, this is, I think, as big as they're going to get for the year, but I still think they're so, so pretty. And as I think you saw earlier, I have about 12 packs of seeds for next year. And I want to do them, you know, in like the triangle kind of cone things that people do them in. Like obelisks yes, type thing. Like those, I want to do them in those. Um, and maybe on an arch. The hollyhocks have been completely stripped because of all the diseased leaves. So they're looking a bit funky. Let's zoom out. They do look a bit funky, but. <laughs> These would maybe look okay if there was just more of an understory. Yeah. But unfortunately the timing's not really worked out with the rose no. bed. Um, but I still like them and I'm gonna do them again next year, but smaller in pots so they don't get they don't get quite like this. Um, this corner is like my favorite part of the raised bed. It's the only part of the raised bed that has anything in it at the bottom. But I grew mo well, not the Nemesia, which to be fair is one of the prettiest things, but everything else I grew from seeds. So there's gypsophilia, there's antirhinums. Um, well, that's it. Those two. <laughs> Those <laughs> this is the tomato this. that you saved as well at the back. No, the tomato I saved is in the pot. Oh, what's that? Is it? Oh, that's the tomato that's I saved. That's tomato you just, yeah. Yeah, look at this massive sunflower. <laughs> this is the tomato I saved in the pot behind the seeds we just sowed. Yeah, I forgot to mention as well, like, this is the first time the cold frame's actually being used <laughs> properly <laughs> since I built it. It's just been a kind of home for random pots, but we do actually have some seeds yes, in there now. It's very exciting. The quad grow tomatoes are looking absolutely amazing, I think. Down here, the Roma, absolutely loaded. We've got the first uh, honeycomb just coming up. We've not tried any of these yet, but very excited. There's two honeycomb and two Roma types in these quad grows, and they're doing okay. They did get a touch of blossom end rot, but we've been supplementing the watering, and it seems to have been working yeah. okay. 
The honeysuckle is still one of our favourite things in the garden. The salvia is looking really nice. Yeah, as well. the salvia That's too. Classic. The lawn, on the other hand, now that it's had its hair cut, uh, is looking pretty barren. But it will bounce back. We've been sowing loads and loads of wildflower seeds in here. Mm -hmm. But this won't be a lawn for much longer, will it, Jess? No, we are getting a greenhouse. So that maybe sounded a little bit more definitive than it actually is. It's <laughs> The greenhouse is definitely 100% now the plan. We've not ordered it or anything like that. Haven't decided where we're getting it from. The size is going to be six by eight, probably. Yes, if probably. not, maybe slightly smaller. I think anything more than six by eight in here is going to be too much. And then the plan is to have two big raised beds down yep. here. And on this side, we're retiring this raised bed and we're going to have three or four with little gaps between so it's a little easier to plant and obviously the cold frame is going to stay where it is. Yeah, so the raised beds are going to be kind of 80 by 80, 60 by 60, something like that. So you've got kind of a raised bed here and then a little bit of border and then another one like that. Yes. That's the plan anyway and then hopefully a nice little archway that kind of leads into the greenhouse and down here we'll have the nice little wild area with the pond which <laughs> is now home to a tiny little baby froglet. And we saw him for the first time a few days ago. Jess managed to snap a really quick pic on her phone, which hopefully I can show you now. I've not seen him today, but it's just amazing how quickly this wildlife pond has come to life. It's full of um, all sorts of creatures, There's hoverflies, damselflies, boatmen. There's just all sorts of life in the pond. There's little water snails that are here already. And this little weed, that hopefully you can just see under the surface, is uh, one called hornwort. And that's the main oxygenator in here. We've got marsh marigolds and the purple loose drive is just looking amazing and always covered in bees and or butterflies. It's just wonderful. It is really, really nice to actually be sowing some seeds in July. It's not something I am at all in the practice of, so hopefully it will stand us in good hopefully. stead for next year. What's funny, you're laughing again. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> thank you ever so much for watching and an extra special thank you to my Chili Peppeteer patrons, Tony, Bill, Pam, Louise, Michael, Mel, Denise, Socks in the Garden and Craig. Hopefully we'll see you again in the next one.